I'm uh, Bianca Francioni. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, Italian, and uh, but my mother is American, and um, I'm from Siena. Now I live in Florence, and I've been uh, doing mine for 20 years this year. Marcel Marceau was uh, doing a three-day show and workshop, and I did everything to get into this workshop. Mm. Uh, not going to class and not going to dance for three days. And I remember the moment uh, in which we all were waiting for him to arrive. And uh, when is he arriving? When is he arriving? And and then, at a certain point, he was just there. I didn't see him walk in. He was just, uh, at a certain point, <laughs> in this uh, big uh, room we were working in. And um, from the first lesson, I realized I, kind of like a priest with, that has the voice, I realized I really wanted to specialize in that from the first hours I was there with him. It was pretty... It's like I had never known... I had never been so sure about something in my life before that moment. Mm. And then he left me a little note that I bring in this little purse. <laughs> um, the, the last day of the workshop with his signature and it says, uh, A bientôt à l'école, see you soon at the school. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So then, <laughs> in September, I went with this. <laughs> I never showed him because then I was taken in the school, so. Yeah. But mine for him was a universal art that could unite countries and nations as a means of peace and that that's what he thought mine was mm. it was also his career but it went beyond that yeah it's something universal like music did he talk mm. much about why he became a mime he said he, that he was born a mime yeah uh, he said, uh, or mine, or nothing. Mm. <laughs> yeah. What about, uh, um, can you go into more detail about uh, his growing up? Because, I, I mean, I know he was, mm. of, he, was a, he was Jewish. He grew up in Strasbourg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was born in Strasbourg, uh, so right at the boundary between France and Germany. Actually, I'm, my great-grandparents were from Strasbourg, mm. so... I feel this connection with him. And then he went to live in Lille, in the northern uh, France. Mm -hmm. Then he came to Paris in the 40s to study. Yeah. Mm. And um, traveled around the world for 60 years, practically, and died in um, southern France Yeah. in 2007. Yeah. Mm. Did he talk much about um, his feelings? I mean, dealing with you know things like the Holocaust or different different things mm. relating to that period in time. Because it was a very difficult period for Europe. Did he? Mm. Yes. Mm. But not in not at length. The things would come out. Uh, once in a while, like uh, I remember somebody making a comment on being on a diet uh, at the mime school, and he just looked at this person and said, "Will you, you, what are you saying? When, when I was, when I was young, people were dying of hunger. Or forget it. I mean, he just made a a joke about it, and." Uh, or mm, 
Oh, yeah, I remember when the Spanish guy in my class was doing a, wanted to do a number on uh, Christopher Columbus. And I don't know, he was kind of politically, he wanted to do some something kind of political, but in a, a kind of direct way. I was actually part of the number, then I, I decided not to be part of it anymore. I I said, no, I, I don't like it, I don't like what you're doing. I, it was my last year at the school, and... <clears throat> He met the this thing of Christopher Columbus ended with the class making fun of the United States, kind of with the Statue of Liberty holding a Coke, and it was kind of to criticize the United States. And I remember Marceau got up and said, "I don't like this because Coke, when I was in the army, was very useful for us. It gave us energy and it kept us going, even if we didn't have a lot of food." So why are you making fun of the states and coke? <laughs> so the Spanish guy was like, <laughs> yeah. My style is certainly closer to Marceau than to De Cru. Um, at the beginning, I would copy him a lot, I would do the white face, and then I got this hat that I've had since 1997, 1997. Mm, that is the same as he has, and the makeup, I would copy it. Mm, but I was different from him physically, and also, uh, even if in mind uh, the sex isn't important, because we're all kind of like an angel, sort of. Angels. But I, well, at the school they encouraged us right away, as I said, to create. So I started creating right away in the school. Then when I finished the school after three years and I came back to Florence, I started with a mime that was self-taught called Jordi. Um, he, he was a street mime. And I started going with him in the street. So I taught him the technique and he taught me how to work in the street and make money doing it. So there I started creating this show called The Music Box, Il Carillon, that started out as just little tiny sketches to do in the street with this little figure with the hat, the little flower dress, the, the flower in one hand, the little umbrella in another hand, and the suitcase there so it was like little symbols of like and it would turn like a music box and then stop and then do a little mind stuff but like many 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 pantomimes now after exactly 18 years it's become a 50 minute show that I have done in theaters and uh, all over Italy that I can sell for a show because it's almost an hour long so it like from here it became I kept adding longer parts, I kept creating stories, it's like a, it's like a concert because it's, pantomimes are like songs that are put together to be part of a whole, but they can be, some can be taken out if, if I have to only do a 20 minute show, I can make it shorter, I can make it longer, I can make it just five minutes, just a little part of the music box. I hope, uh, I, I, I've, I've often felt, I might mean to sound uh, sentimental, that he was kind of following what I was doing, even if he wasn't present. Mm. Um, but um, it was funny because he was uh, a star, so he was sometimes even kind of jealous if, if somebody became a solo artist like him. He liked it when students formed groups and companies, but he always kind of feared the solo artist because it was what he was. Yeah. He never encouraged the, the solos. He always encouraged the group work because it's what he didn't 
didn't do a lot of in his life. He only did about two shows that were company shows, and they weren't ex as successful as um, his solos. So that's right. what he wanted his students to do, to manage to do the company of minds, which is a contradiction in the end, because when mind becomes a group work, it becomes very close to dance. It's a, an art that is basically solo. Already doing mind with two people, there's a dialogue, so you're have to follow the breath and the rhythm of the other. So we, coordinating means counting, and counting means uh, often means dancing. So yeah. I, I, I think he would approve, I hope, of yeah. what I, I've done. It's just that everybody should, on YouTube or in whatever way they can, at least watch Marceau once to know what it's about and not just think it's a joke. Yeah. It would be sufficient to have an interest in it, to teach it at school to kids, because kids really like it. Yeah. And it's something very good for them. I teach children and... Uh, it's incredible. It's an art that mixes a physical exercise with artistic creativity. It's a, it's a great thing. Yeah. So it should be introduced in school. It should be uh, talked about in university. I studied university and the professor of mime and dance, because that's what the course was, never talked about mime. Mm -hmm. He didn't know anything about it and he was a university professor. I gave him videos that I had, me, the student, because he just did things on dance. He didn't even have the material, mm. a university level. So, they just... Mm. I know the, all the acrobatic things in the circus maybe are more interesting for somebody that's young and wants to get into the performing arts, so the splits and the jump and the this is more something that seems more interesting than just moving your hand in a certain way. That's what all mime is about, little things, your breath, it's a doing the splits, <laughs> but with your soul, with this weight that you have inside of you. It's working inside and then outside. It's not about muscular performance. You don't have to be pretty to do mime or beautiful like a dancer. You you can be ugly and still be much so it was very ugly <laughs> without yeah. makeup and still be a performer. Yeah. Yeah, and you got, and you got everybody to, should do it. Yeah, to enrich themselves because it's a uh, something that moves every part of you: your soul, your body, your mind, your creativity, your hands, your feet. The only thing it doesn't move is your voice. Yeah, but who needs another person talking? Mm -hmm.